Here we'll figure out the law of cosines, which relates the sides and angles of triangles. But first, let's make sure you remember the law of sines. Suppose you know these angles, A and B, as well as their opposite sides, lowercase a and b. According to the law of sines, what does A over the sine of angle A equal in terms of side length B and angle B? If you're not sure, click down here to review the law of sines. Right, the law of sines says that A over sine A equals B over sine B. In general, the law of sines relates two pairs of angles and their opposite sides, and it can come in handy when you only have some sides or angles of a triangle and need to find the others. But suppose you only know two sides, which we'll call A and B, and the angle between them, which we'll call uppercase C. You can't use the law of sines here because you don't know any pairs of angles and their opposite sides. So we'll have to figure out another formula to help us find the missing sides and angles of this triangle. Let's specifically try to find this triangle's third side, which we'll call lowercase c. To do that, let's first draw in an altitude from this vertex up here down to this side of the triangle, splitting it into two right triangles on either side. Try using this right triangle to find an expression for this height in terms of side A and angle C. Exactly, this height is opposite angle C in this right triangle, so its length is A times the sine of C. Now we said the length of this bottom side is B, but let's look at the part of it to the left of the altitude. What's the length of this leg of the right triangle adjacent to angle C? Exactly, the length of this side is A times the cosine of C. So if this entire bottom side has length b, and the part to the left of the altitude has length a times the cosine of c, then how long is the remaining portion to the right of the altitude? Nicely done. This side has length b minus a times the cosine of c. So why have we been finding all these side lengths? Well, we wanted to find an expression for side length c in terms of the side lengths a and b and angle c. Notice that side C is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and now you have expressions for the two legs of this right triangle. So by the Pythagorean theorem, the square of A times the sine of C plus the square of B minus A times the cosine of C equals what? To review the Pythagorean theorem instead, click down here. Right, by the Pythagorean theorem, this sum of squares equals C squared. So great. We found an expression for side length c. Let's see if we can simplify it a little bit. Squaring a times the sine of c is the same as a squared times sine squared c. And when we expand the square of b minus a times the cosine of c, we actually get three terms. b squared plus a squared times cosine squared c minus the third term. Try finding this third term. Right, the square of b minus a cosine c is b squared plus a squared cosine squared c minus 2ab cosine c. So let's plug these expressions back into our equation up here. This doesn't look very simplified yet, so let's see what else we can do to clean this up. We're adding all these terms together, and we can do that in any order. So let's switch the order of these two terms. So over here, we're adding a squared times sine squared of c, and a squared times cosine squared of c. Both of these terms have an a squared in them, so let's factor it out. So inside the brackets here, we have sine squared c plus cosine squared c. What number does this expression equal for any angle c? It's a trig identity, and if you don't know it, you can review it by clicking here. Right, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 for any angle. So we can substitute 1 in for this expression up here, giving us a squared times 1, which is just a squared. And now we have an expression that looks a little less messy. And this is called the law of cosines. Notice it has a cosine over here. So the square of side c equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times the cosine of angle c. Let's try the law of cosines out on a sample problem. Here's a triangle, and you know two of its side lengths, 7 and 8, and you know the angle between these sides measures 120 degrees. How long is this triangle's third side? If you get stuck, just click over here. 
Very well done. According to the law of cosines, this side has length 13. If you want to define the remaining two angles of this triangle, you could actually use the law of cosines again, or you could use the law of sines. And so together, the law of sines and the law of cosines are powerful tools that can help you figure out a triangle's remaining sides and angles when you only know a few of them. Let's figure out a way to find the area of a triangle using two sides and the angle between them. For example, take a look at this triangle here, and suppose we want to find its area. Let's say this side has length 5, this side has length 4, and we also know that the angle between these two sides measures 37 degrees. There's a way to find the area of this triangle, so give this question a shot if you want. Otherwise, click here to get started on this lesson. Okay, great, let's get started. Don't worry about this side and this angle just yet. Suppose the base of our triangle has length b, and the vertical height, meaning the perpendicular distance between the base and this vertex up here, is h. What's the area of this triangle in terms of b and h? If you're not sure, click down here to review. Exactly, the area of a triangle is one-half times its base times its height. Next, suppose we don't actually know the height of this triangle. Instead, we know that the length of this side over here is a, and suppose we also know that the measure of the angle between these sides is uppercase c. Notice that we have a right triangle over here. Try using this right triangle and perhaps a trig function to find the height of our blue triangle. If you're not sure how to do that, click down here to review. Nicely done. The height of this triangle is a times the sine of c. At this point, you know the base and height of this triangle. So what's its area in terms of the side lengths a and b and the angle c? Right. Earlier you said the area of this triangle was one-half base times height, and you also found the height was a times the sine of c. So plugging this expression in for the height gives us a new formula for the area of our triangle. We're multiplying all these terms together so their order doesn't matter. Let's just put the a in front of the b so the side lengths are in alphabetical order. And there you have it. If you know two side lengths of a triangle and the measure of the angle between those two sides, then the area of that triangle is one-half times the length of one side times the length of the other side times the sine of the angle between them. Let's finish this lesson off with some numerical examples. Take a look at this triangle here. Suppose its sides have lengths 3, 4, and 6, and that the measure of this angle down here is 26 degrees. What's the area of this triangle? Be sure to round your answer to one decimal place, and feel free to use the calculator down here. Great work! Now this formula works for any triangle, no matter its shape or size. So for your final challenge, take a look at this triangle whose sides have lengths 5, 6, and 9. And suppose this obtuse angle here is 109 degrees. What's the area of this triangle? And don't worry, you can use the calculator to evaluate the sine of 109 degrees.